Oh, lost in space and time. On a mission we were never, never meant to return from. from. We have Ever returned. Hey, the comic shop does a podcast. That's loud. Returning That's... from the horrible secrets wow. of space. It's me, oh. Aaron Z. Lee. A jubilation Z. Lee. I always told a kinship to, to Jubilee because of our common last name. And Jim, too. And Stan. Oh boy, and uh, no. I'm uh, well. I'm, I can pretend. I'm Evan no. Coy. I'm infected with the techno organic virus, and we're here with very special guest star. Is that me? Yes. Yep. Ooh, I'm very excited to be here. Oh boy, it's and then be an our, excellent uh, time. And our Extraordinary. Our regular guest star. And Michael Kelly fan. Get wow. It? Isn't that good? Wow, that's impressive. Mm-hmm. We even had the figure just sitting the, around in the back here, so we could make the pun work. Yeah. Wow, that's. Mm. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's great. The delay on our, our feed. Yep. Well. Yeah, that was good, guys. Well, All I right. mean, that's the peak right there, the Cali band. I don't yep. think this whole show is going to be able to top that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We have a shocking uh, Maury Polvich moment uh, for you uh, coming up. Maury, oh, for me? Maury for Polvich. You, yes. Polvich? Yes. Is that the pole vaulting Maury Povich? It is, it is. Wow. <laughs> it's like, I need to get a running start, and the results will be revealed when I clear the pole. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's so funny when he pole vaults. Because <laughs> he's old. <laughs> <laughs> you going to say something? No. Oh, okay. Oh, <clears throat> oh boy. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So what's going on? Aaron, what's up? What's oh, good? man. So much stuff. Uh, yeah. Just connecting points A to B. Keeping keeping the... Uh, school's going very well. Connecting points A to B. That does sound like a challenge. Well, you know, it's like the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Lots and lots of stuff. So there's stuff. letters after B. That's what you're saying. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, what, tw- 24, 24 letters. 24 letters. Uh, Give or take. Oh, that's, that's a vehicle. I thought you were playing some kind of ambient drone all of a sudden. Yeah, yes, I do have an ambient drone sound effect we'll be playing later. Oh, excellent. Uh, yeah, getting school stuff done. Working here and there on um, on some new Wesley stuff. Not not super hard. Ch- taking my time. Um, oh, I'm looking for one open. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The epilogue, Here's yeah. the epilogue. Let's start there. Oh, um, you should also take one of your trades back here, right? Do you or did you bring your own trade? I brought my own. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. oh good. All right. I thought it's I'd... the meeting of the trades. Wow. Ah. Um, yeah. So what? What else have, have, uh, have I been doing? Working on demos, grading, taking care of Lucy. Who? Not mowing the lawn though. My well, lawn you and Alex bad. Dexter yeah, not mowing the lawn. Well, it's I can't. Theme. I can't get outside. I can't get outside to mow because I got to watch Lucy. And then when because you forgot how to work doors. Well, I can't. I can't have her under one arm and push the lawnmower. I'm pretty sure I've seen that on YouTube before. Uh, I care about my daughter, so I'm not doing that. But if you you don't want to spend time with her doing productive things, that's kind of. I don't have a tractor that I can ride around with her on my lap. I have a push mower. You could duct tape like her car seat on top of the mower. No, that's a bad idea. Eh, Is it? I mean, it's just a gigantic spinning blade and a baby. You just making excuses. Mm, seems like I have a lot to lose in those scenarios, so I prefer not to do that. <laughs> there were a lot of money to save. Martin, what have you been up to? <laughs> Killing babies. <laughs> <laughs> it's my thing. Yeah. I would um, lose Lucy and Teresa. There, mm-hmm. we, there is a baby in Executioner Song. There oh, yeah. That's very weird. Mm-hmm. We're, so today I just twisted a Scott Lobdo. Okay. We're, today we're, we're talking about Executioner Song, the classic early 90s Marvel X-Men crossover. Um Look at that. There it is. It's Look beautiful. at this chunk. Look at that girth. It's yeah, fake. It's, 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 a heavy yeah, it's one. not all executioners. She's, so. she's a thick girl. Yeah, um, yeah uh, it's not all executioners. Three of the four Kelly's of us right. slogged through about 214 pages of stuff that is not executioner song. And then one of us just read executioner song. Who's the Who bigger idiot? Be? Aaron Z. Lee. Yeah, I should have started with executioner song, but I like having the context of some of the other stuff. I, was I wish I had a little bit more context. I didn't need a ton not of that it. Context. Didn't need a ton of it, but I could have used a couple issues. To I, I could use up. about sixty more issues of Mikhail Rasputin. Yeah, that's yeah. a lie. That's a lie. That's I could have used. I could use zero of yeah. Mikhail. No, I don't. I like the Rasputin characters, all of them. So. Well, I like Ilyana. I like Colossus, but you don't. You don't like Mikhail's uh, choice. <laughs> I, it, he's such. It a, was all dumb. It, like. It his, felt very non. Uh, his design is terrible. Like I'm not even really sure what he wants. His generic powers. Generic powers. Like, does he teleport? Or he has energy. Ener- it's an energy based power that it's I mean, energy. It's lets like, him control he's people's like, mind. I don't he's know. like lame bishop. Lame Russian yeah. bishop. <laughs> he's like lame <laughs> Russian bishop. And so is that? Do you think that's why he killed himself? Oh, he did. 
I believe he yeah. took himself. He took. Oh, yeah. I didn't he even notice. That. That's why. I, that's, <laughs> why so, took, that's why Colossus is so sad going into because his brother killed himself. Yeah, it's, it's part of the Morlocks family. Okay. family. Yeah. See, I definitely read that, but I didn't yeah. even. It was just like. <laughs> yeah, he took out most of the Morlocks with him. Yeah, uh, it was. It was wild. Oh, I thought maybe they there teleported. Was there's full spoilers effect for this forty year old stories we're talking about. Yeah, it's, this, it's not forty years uh, old. It's thirty years old. I don't think we need spoilers for a thirty year old book. Um. Even though I went out of my way to make sure he something wasn't uh, yes. contextually spoiled for uh, Michael later on. Is this my script? Which is much no. appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> Say um, those words, Aaron. So, uh, Martin, how did we get on to Executioner Song? Where did this come from? Um, as is the case with all of the uh, new hires that you do, uh, they have no X-Men experience. And uh, so Michael Callie wanted to dip his toes. He's, he'd watched the animated series. Yep. And so I picked randomly Executioner Song, thinking that's a pretty good middle point to try to figure out x-men in and turned out i was not wrong no. no um you you do need some if you watch the animated show you're yeah. pretty much good to jump into most x-men most x-men <laughs> stuff from the Challenge better accepted the better areas um but uh between between the 90s x-men show and just the basic knowledge i had growing up flipping through x books with reckless abandon not knowing anything about all of them um mm-hmm. i was able to piece everything together pretty easily um I don't. I don't think there's really a definitive starting point for X Men. Number it one really is actually number one. Nineteen sixty three. You, you would the, you would start right at the that's very garbage. beginning. That's <clears throat> is it? No, it's not bad. There's uh, some mm, Professor it's X. It's a little lengthy. Says it's, and thinks some weird yeah. stuff. What does he say and think? Um, he's like next to Jean Grey, and he's like, I don't know. It's like, yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's very sexual. It's it's, it's written a for little the odd. Time. A little odd. No, it was creepy back then too. You think it was creepy back then? Yeah, she's like. 14. I remember yeah. I remember there was a reprint of that in like the the Pizza Hut ash can mm-hmm. or whatever and I remember looking at that and going like mm, that seems weird to me mm, I don't I don't care for that Yeah the characters were not handled the best under the Kirby Jackley 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 Jack <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were making a joke No 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 well, I've been the writer of I've been having a really in our fun community? time all week uh, trying to uh, recall things and get yeah. yeah apologies to Jackley Jack Jack <laughs> yeah. yeah Jack Kirby Lee I, I hear like all day long I remember a million names <laughs> and then like when I get home I'm like Bleh, potato <laughs> How is potato it is potato it's not potato So again let's go back to Michael yep. this was your first kind of Oh yeah, this was my uh, this was my first foray into into the X Men, uh, and, and you could follow everything. I mean, there's a million characters that are introduced. I was expecting I was, him to ask a lot of questions, and he didn't. Well, oh. I also spent a lot of time doing due diligence yep. and asked a lot of <coughs> questions around the shop while I was re while I was not while I was reading, but like we go through the con- we go through the back bins once a year. I've done that twice now, so I've had lots of chance to ask Martin and Evan mm-hmm. yeah, and Aaron lots of questions mm-hmm. on characters. Um, I think this would be a great second or third read for someone. I, I don't think it'd be the first thing that someone who's new to the character should start out with. But if you know everyone, it's great. Uh, lots and lots of fun. It had most of my favorite X-Men in it, even though Nightcrawler didn't show up at all. But eh, that's neither here nor there. He's in England. Liked, yeah. Um, shortly yeah. after this, you, you get to find out what he's been doing. Um, hanging out with another character who just kind of disappeared for uh, <laughs> not much of a good reason. Mm-hmm. But um, that's that's past Executioner's song. Um Aaron, when, when did you start reading X Men? Yeah. Oh, I can show you. you is, it, to, is it this? In you you want to go to the yeah. doc cam? Yeah. When when did I show up? I think it was. It was definitely like the regular X Men series. I think I got it from Walmart or Phase or, so, I don't even know, but uh, Executioner yeah. Song is definitely when I got into it. Was uh, it the trading cards? No. Uh, it was must have been the cartoon. I, either this must have 1992. So. Yeah, um, uh, the cartoon come out in ninety two or uh, the cartoon come out in ninety two or ninety two. Yeah, so the cartoon yeah. hits in ninety two. I can't believe that. I always thought I was a little bit older, but no, I was like eleven years old, like perfect. And then uh, I knew about that, and so, so then you see the comics and or in the grocery store or whatever, and you start to ask them, and they're a dollar twenty five, right, or however much they what were. It was what was a quarter sounds right? Yeah, dollar fifty. That's very affordable, right? This this is when I show up to uh, reading stuff. Part three, of course. Uh, of Executioner's it's Song. Issue, it's, it's like when I started with uh, um, Maximum Carnage, it was like issue four. <laughs> well, because the, the the places that I was getting them yeah, weren't, yeah, weren't, weren't a comic right. shop, and they just yeah. get whatever they get, and they put and it out. You, you got four weeks to pick up whatever's there, mm-hmm. and then it's gone, because they, they pulp it. Yep. 
What and, about you, uh, Evan? What was your exposure to X-Men? Um, so I was not an X-Men person for the most part. I was into the TV show. I collected the Toy Biz action figures. Um, I certainly was reading some X-Men books, but I wasn't... I was aware of all of this stuff. I feel like this would be something like I go over to a friend's house and they would have yeah, yeah. X books and I would read them, but I did not have a lot of this stuff. So, mine was uh, Uncanny X Men three hundred four. Anyone want to guess why I was a, I wanted that book? Is there a strong guy on it? Nope. And does Colossus cry in it? No. The is hologram it? cover. Mm. Oh, oh yeah. attractions. Yeah. Um, they got a lot of attention when yep. they did the hologram covers because even even people who didn't read comics were like, "Ooh, hologram like, Ooh. must have hologram." Um, yeah, it was a the height of the. the what was the Wolverine the hologram one? Was that seventy five? Seventy five. Okay, I, I got X Men twenty five. I had Excalibur seventy five as well. Could be that um, sounds right. Sounds Excalibur right. started around the same time as Wolverine, right? Late eighties. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, because I think it was in the eighties for uh, eighty eight, eighty nine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was Fatal Attractions, and then. Um, I didn't really get into X Men until Age of Apocalypse, uh, but with, with Age of Apocalypse, and then uh, the store had a, a bunch of X Men from the canceled series uh, in the back bins at that time, so I grabbed a bunch of those. I'm always surprised I didn't get more into Age of Apocalypse because all I guess all of my X Men exposure for the most part was Wizard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That like Wizard was just telling you what's going on with these properties. Mm-hmm. So I was uh, uh, following the storylines. I'd get an X book here or there. Um, but then Age of Apocalypse, which we're not talking about, mm-hmm. but like that hit, and that was such an interesting mm-hmm. thing for me, like rebooting everything for four issues or whatever it was. It was a strong concept. Yeah, yeah very strong concept. But um, Executioner's Song. Yes. Where are we going from here? Uh, want the backs? Uh, yeah. Uh, let me do some. Um, so set the stage. Set set the table. So Marvel was in a little bit of trouble with their <laughs> X books at the time, along with a couple others, because the uh, Image uh, guys had all left. Um, and they had no one to fill the vacuum um, of uh, the, the, this exit. Um, prior to that, Chris exit. Claremont... Exit. Mm. Uh, prior to that, Chris Claremont had left under uh, not the best of circumstances. He had a kind of falling out with Bob Harris, uh, and it was kind of a choose Jim Lee or me situation, and Bob Harris chose wrong. I'm already going to sidebar here. Chris Claremont. Was he affiliated at all at any point in time with Image and potentially doing being an Image creator or being in the first line of Image books? Uh, I don't know about the first line, but there was talks. Yeah, yeah. Was, okay. was, didn't he do Wildcat stuff? Or he was he was slated to do Wildcat stuff with Jim Lee. It was something with uh, Wilts, uh, the Hunter, the Hunt, Huntsman, the yeah. Huntsman. Yes, with Wilts Fortasia, right? Yes. Mm. But then Willis ended up doing Wetworks. But yeah, he, I guess I guess uh, he was fed up with Bob Harris at the time because Bob Harris was coddling of the image creators and like, mm-hmm. well, if Todd wants to write Spider Man, Todd can write Spider Man, and if so and so is missing a deadline, that's fine. They're still selling a million books. Where, um, I don't know. I guess it didn't sit well. You know. So Tony, they, I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. So basically, the X books were sitting in a situation where they had no creative team. <laughs> um, they had no real direction. Um, most of the themes they had been exploring were things that were getting a little bit. Uh, tired or solved in the real world, like the uh, fall of the Berlin Wall happening, um, apartheid starting to fall apart in uh, uh, South Africa, which they had, which they had mined for uh, material for the uh, last big crossover uh, extinction agenda. So they brought in all these basically new guys uh, to try and get some things going, and they were tasked with trying to steer the course for the X Men and. This was their first event, and I think they did a pretty good job putting their marks on the book. So, yeah, I, I it really did. It was a great encapsulation of so, somebody who's not a huge X Men fan, mm-hmm. but obviously I'm aware of the X Men and I've read a lot mm-hmm. of X Men over the years. Just great storytelling. All the characters seemed fairly well defined. They all had their moments. Mm-hmm. Um, it was fun that there was a bunch of loose ends. And I'm like, how are they going to tie this all together? And then it's, it's, it was 12 issues, too, which I appreciate. 12 yeah. issues, to me, isn't overwhelming. Yeah. Um, that uh, Again, you get to issue 6, 7, 8, and you're like, oh, oh, I can see all the little chess mm-hmm. moves that they've done, um, and they're executing very well. And it was. It was a very fun, very good read. Beautiful. Some beautiful art in there. Flipping past some Jay Lee stuff. We've talked a lot about Jay Lee. Yeah. Jim Lee leaves the book in a weird note. Yeah, uh, he left at, like, uh, he uh, eleven was his last issue, and, and it's the Mojo Verse thing where yep. everyone is like a goofball. 
And then, like that's how he left. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like what? Yeah, he left at eleven. Uh, Liefeld left. Uh, <sighs> stopped doing the art on X Force Nine, and his clo- co-plotting uh, ended at eleven uh, for X Force. So it's just like the most iconic X Men artist, arguably. It's such a goofy story to end on. It was probably uh, Acts of Vengeance. Uh, Doctor Who says, one. "Doctor Who says this whole period is the beginning of the decade where I was in college and st- up to reading any comics. So this is a legit history lesson for me. I think Atlantis Attacks or Acts of Vengeance was the last Marvel crossover yeah. event I tried to read before I gave up. Yeah, so. a- Acts of Vengeance would have been like uh, that's what X Men two seventies is that two sixties? I don't know. I think it's about <coughs> where that would be. There's some good stuff throughout here. Like like uh, it doesn't we'll do. start off with Executioner's. Do you want to go to the cam with this? Or? Yeah, we can do that." Like we've got some uh, some Mark Tex Maverick story, and it's just it's just eighties movie canon film nonsense, a, like superhero edition of it. But you know anything Mark Tex draws, uh, like I'm there for it. I he, forgot he was in the the earlier parts of this um, <laughs> that you read several several months ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I this. started reading that. Th- I started reading this a while ago. I've been done reading this for uh, what almost three weeks now, <laughs> probably. And he, and he did um, he did some backups for that. He also did some Wolverine stuff mm-hmm. and. Uh, Sabretooth miniseries and Ghost Rider, of course. Yep. Yeah, what we're looking known. at is uh, a Marvel Epic Collection, and that is basically Marvel has divvied up each series uh, from start to finish into these volumes, and they release the volumes randomly. So mm-hmm. Yes, they're uh, not in sequential order, although they're numbered sequentially. Like somebody's gone through and, and determined what volumes are going to be what. But So we, we got a bunch of stuff before <clears throat> it actually hit Executioner Song um, that... It sets the table. It's a like little the, bit, yeah. The writers are at least consistent. Yeah, and it through. was nice to see the characters approved upon in Executioner's song, especially like Archangel and uh, a couple of the others. That and they did some real weird stuff early on, like when they had Callisto, like have like a supermodel body. Like what? What? I don't remember that from earlier in the series, but I d- I've never read X Men obviously in chronological order. It was all back it's issue, so find an issue. Weird. But like, yeah, like I, why, weird would for me too. why would you even? Why would you? Even do that. They did it with Morrow again. Um, oh right, yeah, Alan, Alan yeah. Davis. I just, uh, it's just so weird. Like, why change the, why change the look? They, like, they're, they're that character for a reason. They're a unique or iconic design. Like, yeah. I don't know. So, Executioner's song itself, um, is, it brings together X, the X Men teams, Gold and Blue, mm-hmm. uh, X Force, and uh, X Factor. X Force is just recently broken off uh, as New Mutants from the regular uh, X-Men team, so they're kind of at odds a little bit with uh, the Xavier's Dream crew. And X-Factor is a government, is, is working for the government um, as their mutant, we'll go with Task Force. Wait, um, who's leading the gold team? Storm. Storm. Oh, yeah. The blue team, I'm sorry. Cyclops. Cyclops. But Cyclops is out of commission. No, not, not yet. yet. Well, not until he gets kidnapped. <laughs> okay. These uh, d- these designs, those like the Jim Lee and Will Spurtasio designs are so strong. I just love to see all the characters together. Like that, and those those iconic designs. I don't think that any designs that's ha- that have happened with these characters afterwards have been as strong. They try, but it's just I don't know. There, there's a reason that when people think of it, they, th- they think of this, or when they see like the Marvel versus Capcom, yeah, stuff like that stuff looks great. Well, most of the stuff was stolen for the cartoon, so it's kind of yeah ingrained in me that way as well. Yes, that's right. Actually, I don't know the the exact timetable of obviously the cartoons going. The cartoons a huge success. Mm-hmm. You're taking. Some of this material, yeah, but yeah. Like, how how close is the mandate? You think of like, oh, the cartoon's a huge success. Like, keep taking stuff from the current book. Oh, or, I'm sure, like, I'm I, sure I don't know. It's probably their mission statement right yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. Is let's keep this close to the storylines because there's some scenes in here that if if you gotta catch them all. If you uh, just took the panel out of it and said like, oh, what what is this from? It's easily like a night night the night of the Sentinels raid on the uh, yeah. government files. Yeah, easily. But I mean, that's uh, like, oh, was, did I say that on? Uh, I think I was saying it before the show. If they put out a book tomorrow that felt like, you know, the best of, of this mm-hmm. book, I would be all over it. Yeah. I would definitely get it. If it was like back in that that prime, you know, '90s X Men era, and and didn't do anything weird, like, oh, here's Cassandra Nova in the middle of it. It's like, yeah, mm, or do you know, or like, oh, here's the guy from the Flaming Lips. It's like, what? Wh- why? 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 Why you do that? What? X Men. What was that called? X Men. It was X Men. X Men ninety two. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, they had the. There was a. Yeah, it was <clears throat> really like, awkward. And I liked the flaming lips, but it was just like, what? Yeah, that's <clears throat> weird. Okay, I didn't know that. But uh, yeah, and you got uh, uh, Art T Bear, uh, an, an inker up until taking over here, right? This is, is, wasn't he mostly known as an inker? I think so. Yeah, Art T Bear. I did not know. Doing their best uh, Jim Lee imitation. You had and to. You, I do and feel like it's a good transition from Jim Lee to the like, stuff. Like everybody's everybody's trying. Oh, I'm sure look, Bob look. Harris was railing for whatever artist was writing to look like who yes. was on the book before. Well, that's that's why you get Brandon Peterson yeah. and mm. but like look at that panel. That's straight out of Night of the Sentinels, right? The raid on the government facility, yeah. keep out and all that stuff. Yeah. How uh, and they've got the little headsets. They're they're going on their their strike team. Page count? Uh 205, 205. 205. But uh and the, the funny thing about that though is like that seems like such an easy thing to do to have because one team was set up to be covert right the blue team is the more covert team yeah because you had like a psylocke and Wolverine Gam- gambit, and, gambit and, 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 mm-hmm. and cyclops and beast and the other time was the other team was meant to be more like the powerhouse team yeah. and that's such a strong concept mm-hmm. it's it seems like so much thought went into setting that up and then they abandoned it so quickly but anyway what do i know nothing you know nothing uh, i tell you what I love Beast in this. This is this is such a fun Beast. This is the the Beast that I love. Where e- even though he's doting over Professor X and things like that, there is a good sense of humor. He mm-hmm. really cares. Um, he's yeah, he's he's still this fun, explosive, acrobatic, whatever. But uh, I really like how Beast was portrayed in this whole thing. Look at that. Yeah, once they get him out of that Mojo story where he has to talk like Scooby Doo, like. <laughs> Ooh, ah, so nineties. Look at look at Rogue and Bishop here. Look at those teeny tiny little sunglasses in that hat. Yes, just uh, the Zuba uh, pants. Uh, uh, yeah, it's and that's not the last time that we'll see no, them. No, it's, some silly it's stuff. the style's very dated in this, but I also think that that's what make it, makes it fun. Yeah, that's more fun than this thing where like Cyclops this, that's is a just, weird sequence. Just imagining this. He, also, when you think of Cyclops, do you think about him like s- sitting alone in a bar, staring at like a pinup? Yeah, it, it's it's a weird. That's a weird sequence. It's very strange, and the way it's resolved is like a non-resolution. And then <laughs> I c- I do kind of like uh, Iceman and Colossus just shopping. It's that it's that real world stuff that we talk about. That like it's it's fun to see the superheroes just do regular things. Um, like in the follow up, it's it, the aftermath of this. Which is not included in this book, which should be. Yeah. Um, there are fun, like a lot of fun moments of just like the uh, again Beast and Archangel trying to rebuild the bar that's been blown up, and just them kind of just being silly and talking about how Beast wrote Archangel's or must maybe Angel's graduating paper of the, until Professor Xavier decided that it needed to be an oral thing at the end. So yeah. like he he paid Beast a thousand dollars to write his paper and. Just, just silly things like that, where it's just like the buddy buddy stuff, like or the um, multiple man conga line. <laughs> yes, on page two twenty nine. That that's pretty wonderful. Uh, Doctor Who. I know the animated series was huge with kids at the time, but someone who's read the book in the eighties had my mind blown by the quality of uh, Batman the animated series at the same time the X Men oh, yeah. series started. Two classic cartoons. It's an embarrassment of riches. Yeah, in the nineties, what an what an era, Un, unmatched, unmatched since. And that kind of, I mean, there's been good cartoons since, but there hasn't been like, because the Fox Kids lineup was like a huge mm-hmm. punch, and then there was compet- competition for that. That's r- really set off that, like, premiere Saturday morning stuff. I don't know. That Fantastic Four cartoon was really good. <laughs> uh, I wanted it to be better. Season two was better. I don't think he does. But we season Jay- two was better. Is this Jay Lee stuff? Yeah, we got some Jay Lee. Oh, middle nipples, sure baby. Um, Slap those nipples right in the middle of the pecs. Everybody knows that's where they are. We must be on two forty-seven. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. His this stuff though. His compositions are bonkers. His 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 use. He of, is cooking on this. He is cooking with gas. Um, I'm surprised even to. They brought the tiny sunglasses back. Yeah. It must be. Look, an, it must be. An, must have been an editorial thing. Look at that image though. Look. I mean, it's just the wild. No idea where they're. Uh, two forty-nine. Oh, I'm going too far. Okay, I was on the right page. You guys. Oh, I love all the splatter. He's going like full Sinkevich on it. The, all the wrinkles on the face, but totally different than the way the other people do it. Such a great sense of like movement and place, and, and not afraid to use silhouettes. Not afraid to use silhouettes. I'm surprised how minimal some from of the new backgrounds. Warriors? Huh? Silhouette from New Warriors? Yes. Yes. I'm surprised how minimal some of the backgrounds are, and I didn't catch that for the longest time because I feel like the faces and the poses are just so dynamic. 
and he does do some establishing shots, so you know mm-hmm. where you are. Yeah, but it's just it's a great way of like, doing some minimal background stuff. But it just uh, as someone who tries to pay attention to this stuff, I didn't realize it for the longest time. And it's L. Milgram inking. Yeah, I didn't know L. Milgram had this gear to do like a J. Lee thing. I always think of him over the top of like Ron Lim or you know yeah. just, just being real clean. As long as spare. he's not penciling himself, I'm <laughs> fine. Well, he, he does a little good character of himself. Of himself, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah you've you've seen that in the uh, Marvel. The is bullpen. It? No, no. It's, what was it? It was a. It was a. Re- it was they got rid of their inventory stories through a Marvel premiere. I uh, not Marvel premiere. Not Marvel Age either. Was it Marvel Age? Just say Marvel premiere. It's, it, it was Marvel there. Gobblegook. Mar- <laughs> yeah, Marvel yeah it was. It was something something. Getting rid of those uh, those inventory stories. Some really strong ones in there too, and they printed those on uh, glossy paper. But uh, Archangel, kind of whiny, right? Not here. No, I think in the honest, earlier the, yeah. the the poorly written stuff that came before this, yes, but this is him working through everything and being like, "F you, apocalypse." Yeah, I am yeah. not your horseman. Um, Archangel was my favorite part oh, of Executioner's special. song, and he was a character yeah. that I historically always thought was just kind of the butt end of the joke, especially before his transition into Archangel. Mm-hmm. But the amount of development that they gave him in the 12 issues of this of this story plus a little bit before and then what comes after mm-hmm. um it is it is night and day they make it very clear he's not the he's not the spoiled brat that he once was when he joined uh Xavier's school all those years mm-hmm. ago he's really he really seems to be fighting for not only his his place as a, a regular member of the team uh, not that he he doesn't mm-hmm. have that already but mm-hmm. he's really really pushing to make sure that he can set himself apart from the the tragedy that befell him with Apocalypse's transforma- transformation of him. Yeah, great design too with the Walt Simonson. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, great Archangel stuff. Archangel design. Yeah, he was, he was he was one of my favorites from back in the day. I do want to highlight this panel too here with uh, Rain Sinclair Wolfsbane. Oh, that with, that, l- that giant silhouette. Two, no, it's uh, two fifty four bottom oh, left corner where she's like, peeking around the corner. Yeah, I oh, I just yeah, love I those circle that. eyes with <clears> the uh, the vertical. I just love the fact that Wolfsbane kicked some. Uh, Feral butt. There. Yeah, that was. I still yeah, don't understand it, why Feral exists. <laughs> why they didn't? Why they didn't just move Wolfsbane over with the rest of the X Force crew? It just it doesn't make any sense to me that you create the exact same character. Well, the, it's, it exists for the gag of uh, the cats and dogs fighting, in in this bit. Also, her like kissing Richter. Like what? I, uh, I must the, have missed that. The, uh, there's something with the aftermath of what happened in uh, Genosha. Oh, okay. She was she was in a weird like mental state for a long time. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, look at the movement on that. Yeah, great colors. Like uh, the color flats really work on Jay Lee's stuff. So that was the other thing. Jay Lee's stuff. Hey, why don't you take a look at this now? No, no, no. Don't do that. Take a look. Um, <coughs> well, it's too. We it, we can't take a look. It. We can't. I have seen it. Take I like look. it. The Just color. Open, no, no, open it up right now. Start flipping through it. All right, I'm going to end the podcast. Let's do it. The color flats with Jay Lee are great. I yes. think that that's one of those things that. In Martin's tossing this book Open over here. Open it up. Look at it. Just flip through it right now. Do Don't. it. Don't. Okay. The, the, the colors for Inhumans just... I control the cameras. Uh, he, controls <laughs> the, uh, he controls the horizontal and the vertical. Oh, Maybe we'll get off the dock cam for all... Yeah, just flip through it. Compare. Contrast. It's, it's a different, it's a different it's, guy. It's just a different animal. It's just so... This is Jay Lee six years later. Yeah. And I love his stuff. Yeah. Uh, five wow. or six years. I this was like 98, that. 99, like, something like that. I thought there now. was like a 10 year gap. I thought no. that was. And okay. is it the slick coloring? Or so? I don't know what it is. I just don't. Well, I, I think he's using reference here. And I think on here there is no time. And he's just going. I think that's the difference. Oh, you could be right. That's a very interesting point. This feels very reference. I still like this a lot. Like this is this is the best version of Inhumans that there is yes, out there. Yes, hundred percent. In my in my opinion. But it is funny we're talking about how much we like this art, and then Martin pulls the Inhumans book, and I'm like, oh, for totally different reasons. It was just I was going. Oh, like, this is oh, just different than. I'm like, uh, also, in in the, the Inhumans totally should have used this little like creepy baby as their diplomat. Come on, <laughs> how do you not? How do you? Uh, how, I just don't understand Marvel. Like this is the best version. Of, I don't get how you don't read this and go, yeah, let's just do this. Yeah, let's just do this. We'll Easy turn peasy. this right into a movie. Well, speaking right. of babies, um, so yeah, so the, the basic storyline that we're going through right here is that uh, at the start of this, Xavier's giving a uh, speech about uh, probably unity at a or Lila something. Cheney concert. Yes, yes. Uh, related to um, the Cheneys. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, it wasn't a Flaming Lips concert. No. Mm-mm. 
Not this it would have been cool. Um, and Xavier just you know gets shot by someone in the crowd. Turns out to be Cable, or so it seems. Cable, yes. Who is Cable? <laughs> Cable, uh, it's well, just an alternative to Dish. Nobody really well, knows who he is. Well, reading point. to the yeah, at this point, I didn't realize that at the time that they still hadn't fleshed out that he was the. Uh, oh boy! Spoilers. Look at that panel, man! Look Spoilers. at that screaming magenta. Scott mm -hmm. Summers and Madeline Pryor, who is a clone of Jean Grey, had a baby. Easy. That baby was infected with a techno organic virus, sent to the future, where he was raised by his now elderly younger sister. <laughs> Yep. I'm following it 100%. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Then he comes back as a freedom fighter, a uh, 50 year old, older than his parents, and meets his parents for the first time, mm -hmm. unbeknownst to anyone. Yes. This is a swipe. On page 263, there's a multiple man running. Wolverine or somebody ran in this exact same pose. Doesn't that look incredibly familiar? I mean, that could just be a generic. I feel like that's. We yeah. like throwing that swipe word around a lot. Yep. Well, I'm not opposed to swipes. I like him. I like homages and swipes and all that stuff. Jay Lee really likes pink, huh? He's well, not. He's <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm. I'm not. Uh, I'm not complaining. Oh, uh, what a, what a heck of a page yeah. right here, man. So like, so like the whole thing is about yeah. like the new mutants and X Factor kind of going at it, and it's kind of building and building and building, and then when the blue team, blue X Men team shows up, like that's how you do it right there. Uh, yep. <clears throat> like what a page turn. Uh, like. So seeing yeah. as the new as uh, X Factor is or X Force is associated with uh, Cable, uh, the X teams decide that they, they're the best uh, way to try and find Cable, track him down. Um, meanwhile, Gene and Scott have been kidnapped by Strife, uh, who has a a uh, subtle uh, costume. They, they, gave, they gave costume. up pretty quickly <clears throat> with this costume. No, Scott and Gene no, yeah, gave up pretty quickly to Strife. They're there, very easy yeah. to get kidnapped. Please, um, goons. So we we uh, we knew that, uh, I think the audience knew at the time that uh, Strife and Cable looked exactly the same. Um, it's again he takes his helmet off. It's revealed um, again in this, uh, and Strife has some mommy daddy issues. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He and does. basically uh, torments Scott and Gene, who have no clue who he is. Uh, or the context, because they have not traveled to the future to raise their own child, which also mm -hmm. happens. Um, I bought that when it came out. X-Men. It's very easy to just jump right into. I, yes. I, just pick up any book. You're fine. Um, it's like uh, Crazy Cat. You know, when somebody throws yeah. a brick. Somebody and throws a brick, yeah, and yeah, there's yeah. a gag, and you start it over. So Xavier did not die from the shot. He is critically wounded with a techno-organic virus. Uh, Moira and Beast are uh, powerless to, to do anything about it. Uh, so, a newly uh, apocalypse has been awo has been awoken, awoken early. awakened, yes. awakened. Yes, Let's his alarm was. went off a little bit too early. Uh, so he is not fully regenerated. Yeah, he's been he's been cooking in his pyramid there, and yep. but not uh, for long enough. Not for, not long, for long enough. enough. Yeah, the easy bake oven is an not undercooked done. apocalypse. I'm, I don't know if my head of where Aaron is yet. Uh, I'm on page three hundred. Oh, we've got a, our money right. shot of our uh, mostly gold team page with Beast. Oh, so um, one of the one of the things that I, I think I can add in here, and correct me if mm -hmm. I'm wrong, Your Martin, mind. is uh, the four horsemen of the well, the three horsemen of the apocalypse. The three horsemen, yeah, they were down. However horsemen. many horsemen of the apocalypse there are, um, Strife beat up Apocalypse, so now they are serving uh, Strife instead of Apocalypse, along with the yeah, Mutant Liberation like, Front yes. and one other group. And one other weird group. Yeah, they were. Oh yeah, is that the group with like the uh, the Rock Boys or whatever? Yeah, yes. the Dark Riders. Yeah, oh, the yeah, Dark yeah, Riders. The dark yes. Riders. <laughs> Emaciated beast. What a weird. So uh, yeah. Um, yeah, hunger. Hunger slaps him with the uh, with, with her power and emaciates him. And then she makes the mistake of trying to do the same thing to Quicksilver, which was one of uh, my favorite moments of this issue because uh, Quicksilver's metabolism is just too fast, and it has the reverse effect on uh, on hunger, and she ends up suffering instead of him. It's now great. beast recovers real quick. How how long does hunger's like if, if she does that I'm to you? Sure. Like I'm honestly not sure. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's unclear. I just feel like Beast made a comeback pretty quick, and that was interesting. Quicksilver was another shocking <clears throat> character for me. Um, my only experience with him was as uh, as as whatever his fate was in the Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. um, and Martin he's so Stone, much better in the comics. He's so good in the comics. Yeah. Um, there's nothing like a character who's arrogant, but arrogant for a reason, and that's yeah. so hard to do right. And Quicksilver does it 
does it great in this comic. I um, like that he's kind of under Peter David's like, hand. Yeah. It was. It's like the Muhammad Ali quote. It's not bragging if you can back it up. Yep. That's what I think of when I think of Quicksilver. Basically, Quicksilver's issue is that the world moves at a snail's pace around him all the time, and it's grating and irritating and causes him to be a little bit cranky. Yeah. Um, Understandable. Yeah. So. Especially after uh, waiting in line at Walmart today. <laughs> Yeah, I get it. Imagine Not if that sponsored. was like ten times slower. Than Could you imagine was. Quicksilver in the drive-through nowadays? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, he'd, he'd, he'd go ballistic. It does take forever to get food in the drive-through. Yeah, I literally go to the grocery store, buy it, but then I have to wait in line at the grocery store. Oh, this is a classic image here too on three hundred eight. This is almost a parody, right? This is this is oh almost a parody of Cable. <laughs> this is this is this is the Someone out Rob Liefeld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob Liefeld. Channeled their Liefeld. They and it's the Capullo, book too. Right. Which, which book are we on right now? Uh, I think we're in issue three. This is four. X-Force. It's, X-Force. A, it's yeah, X-Force because right. so it's that's, Capullo. That's, yeah, with Greg. They gave him a lot of really good moments to draw Capullo. I think that uh, maybe his stuff might be some of the strongest of the whole book, actually, having, having gone through it. Between Capullo and, um, and uh, Jay Lee, those were my, my two yeah, favorites. Yeah, Jay Lee's very strong. I feel like Capullo has more story moments, though. Like, Capullo Jay Lee looks does. cool. Yeah. But I don't know that there's a ton of great, like, whoa, what a cool moment. No, it's just all action, all like movement, like you guys said. Very exciting to look at. But yeah, like this thing with Feral and Wolverine with the claws around her neck here, yeah, like, that, and like the and like with the uh, the foliage mm-hmm. around the edge. That you'd like to see Wolverine show up and not get beat up, because that's that's a trope that happens so well, much. That's to, that's to prove how bad the bad person is. Is you mm-hmm. you have the yeah, Lieutenant, not even you have Lieutenant Worf get him. beat up. Uh, like you gotta have like writing that's strong enough where you have your competent heroes. Go into a situation where they're yeah, yeah. where they now have to use their skills and strengths to to solve it. Like they they're still they're still competent, but they're also challenged now. I, I hate when they walk into a thing and then they just get totally beat up by like a little kid, and mm-hmm. it's like, I, it, unless it's an issue of runaways, then it's great. Yeah, well, good point. I mean, it can be done well. Yeah, yeah. Right. So there, there's an exception to everything. It's all in yeah. The uh, one of the reviews I was reading this is actually talking about the difference between. Fabian and Scott's writing, where Fabian takes the tropes that are uh, X Men established and uses them in a way that uh, is competent, while Scott Lobdell co- tends to just use them for the sake of using them. As a, it's like it's like it's an easy way for me to tell the story. Yeah, and he's like all about just getting the characters to just cry and cry and yell yep. and scream and yep. cry and cry, and it's just like. Ugh. I think that might even tie in with a note from uh, someone in the in the comments. Oh, I accidentally turned. Go for it. From Jonathan, Jonathan Lego Man. I got to uh, Did I miss the gruel force feeding? Uh, I believe that's a, a reference. Uh, have we gotten to that? The I don't think yet? we've gotten to that. I don't think we've gotten there yet. We're getting close. We're getting up to yeah. the, to where, the where weird. Where Strife is uh, feeding mommy and daddy. You, yes. Uh, and the weird tentacles. and the, Yeah, the, the, yeah. Gr- the groping tentacles. What? We're, we're coming up to it now. Yeah. Don't you worry, <laughs> Mr. Lego Man. I do like that they reuse, like they established mm. some of the setting in Muir Island and some other places. Mm. And uh, and they used it again. Like the, they had this platform in a Jim Lee thing, right, on page 327. Thank you. Like that was in uh, the Muir Island saga or whatever that was leading up to X-Men 1. Right. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. 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 Platform it. familiar. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I, I I like when things are established and then it's referenced again and it's not like it's a totally new thing. Oh man, I loved this page as a kid. Yeah. This issue was one of the was one of my first X Men issues. This one with the orange cover, Brandon Peterson cover. I read this thing to tatters. I had a little label maker mm-hmm. that had my name on here. I restapled the spine <laughs> <laughs> together. I st- it was all torn up on the side. I still have it somewhere. I would consider that a relic. That's a, a sign of a time that doesn't quite exist anymore. From what Fabian said in an... Uh, Fabian who? Uh, <laughs> his last Nisiesa, name starts with an N. Right? I have, who, who knows? We Nisiesa. were waiting for his you to say His name is Fabian Nachos here at the store. Nachos. Um, well. Same with Electra. They're brother and sister. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about that. Yeah, look at that. Kind, oh, kind of pockets yeah. oh, um, off the wing. That's good. Yeah, the writer basically had said that there was this story was a lot more expansive when they broke it down, and they they were going to bring back Magneto. Uh, Sinister had a much larger part, and I think that they really did pay attention to um, what had happened in the recent past, like with uh, the asteroid M, yep, and mm-hmm. all that stuff. And I think that they were cognizant of uh, cognizant. Trying, yes. So oh, I got a big word too, Michael. Nice job. I forgot which was earlier. That Fabian's last name. Are we are we past the part where Mr. Sinister shows up? I think we are. I think at we this are. Point. Yeah. So yeah, Sinister gets <coughs> shot in the head. He kind of yeah. That that is a, a nice little 
it was Terminator out at that point? Oh that, yeah, that was yeah. Terminator. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, it's probably uh, right on the ooh, nose. Uh, yeah, right? I didn't even think of that. That yeah. totally is. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness! <clears throat> yeah, I'm so 92. excited about the Terminator. If I December forgot. ninety-two, it was definitely out. Shows up and then he. He doesn't show up. Yep, and um, then comes back at the end. And comes back at the end and kind of goes, ah, this didn't work out the way I wanted it to. And then he Shucks. left. <laughs> Very Look interesting. these pages. We're at 339 right now. We're getting into the J. Lee X Factor mm-hmm. stuff. Yep. Is this, this is the J. Lee Peter David issue. I think this yeah. is where the gruel might start. <laughs> uh, or it, oh, an issue after. Look at that. No, this is the, yeah, the we're commercial talking super for having comics. a uh, bishop. Like, I love the black and white and uh, cable miniseries done by Jerry Lynn. That's, oh, that's so strong. It's so really cool. Good. Let's all talk at the same time. We are. Yep, okay. Uh, yeah, this lighting and the... Well, go ahead, Aaron. Yeah, but the, the silhouettes in the black and white with Wolverine, like where he he's... Because disab- he's supposed to be stealthy, right? So mm-hmm. like when you put him in silhouette and have him like coming out of foliage and stuff and not, not readily seen or... Or blending him like Jay Lee does a nice job with that. All that good splatter again. So angular. I think I, I think he gets smoothed out for Inhumans. There's so yeah. much angularity here. So much like Sam Keith and like uh, fr- um, some of the Wolverine that he doesn't hear looks exactly like how Sam Keith was doing it. Marvel Comics presents like he's just taking exactly how he drew it. But then another image is well, I think he owns it and Wolverine becomes his own. Yeah, they both uh, kind of came through Marvel Comics presents. So he definitely has seen. I don't remember Jay Lee's stuff in Marvel Comics. Presents. He took over for Rob in a uh, Beast story in Marvel Comics Presents. Yeah. yeah, I think that was his first Marvel work. I think he did a lot of covers for that too. Yes. Yeah. Love Marvel Comics Presents. Yeah. They should. They should bring back an anthology like that. I bought it when they did it again, because I got to put my money where my mouth is, right? Did you uh, Did you look at page three forty eight in any detail, Aaron? I think you'd like the the background on it, because we've been talking about that style of no. Really? What a I do. Li- I do like the brush strokes, but like it's the way it's colored makes it look weird. Like it's like little rocks, little molten rocks. I don't know. Hmm. It's like his take on Kirby Crackle, but Maybe. it doesn't work as well to me. Yeah, you you're not digging it like me. Mm, it it's not bad. Yeah, I don't hate it, but it's I didn't stop and wasn't is like, wow, them, that's really cool. Is this them fighting at Weapon H? I believe so. Or K- Department K. K. Something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I didn't want to. I, I, Has Cyclops ever looked cooler? When like doing that. Look at there. We got some halftone in there. I think um, Jay Lee was a perfect uh, choice to draw Strife. Because yeah. We're well, talking, we're talking angular. Yeah. 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 Angular. Angular. And that's why he works so well with Angel also because he can yeah. make yes. his wings look yep. really deadly. That's a good observation. Uh, th- what a what a yeah, book that would have been if they did a solo Archangel book with Jay Lee on art. Mm-hmm. That would have been killer. Uh, page three fifty four. The time. very uh, very bottom panel here when Archangel accidentally takes someone's life. Um, I like how Jay Lee just uses that one little red panel to show you everything you mm. need to know about what happened. And then, uh, unfortunately, the head rolls pretty close to Polaris, I believe, shortly after that. Oh, and, uh, uh, boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and they, I'm glad that they did some kind of moment like that because if his wings are razor sharp and there's no accident, can, like he's he's mm-hmm. whipping those things all over the place. Mm-hmm. And, and he's again, it's fast. also like a like kind of a, a reality check for him. Yeah, it's too, like I a, a will. Like, what's he gonna do from here? He's just taken someone's life. If he's gonna double down on what he learned from Apocalypse, or is he going to is he going to do something else? Um, I don't really think you get a concrete answer quite yet. They do a bit more <laughs> developing before you you find out whether this moment shapes him to be better or worse. Like this is right out of Sam Keith. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, yep. that's especially this. that middle piece. Yeah. Like this is from him climbing up the cliff up to Tiger Tiger's yes. uh apartment in uh Marvel Comics Presents in the Blood Hungry story. Sam Keith. I forget I think that was written by Peter <laughs> David too, actually. I think Blood I Hunger is written by Peter David. I can't check you on that one. <laughs> I, I just I love, right. again, Bishop with, oh. And just the giant gun. Just a giant gun. <clears throat> More of that uh, background work you love so much, Aaron. And which page? Uh, 360 and 361. Oh, yeah. I really like this double lighting on whoever this guy is. That uh, Like that dark line up through the center of the mm. face there. Uh-huh. That's some strong stuff, Quicksilver. Looking good. What, what happened? Did they like, cut his leg or something? Uh, yeah. Got to slow him down somehow. And you don't get to find out for a few more issues what happens to him. Well. Yeah, then I had this one, too. Issue. My only complaint about this might be if I was collecting at the time. Yeah. 
you really have to read all of these. Like you yeah. can't you can't just read. Uh-huh. It's, it's it's every team in everyone's book, mm-hmm. and it's just it's it's not focused on one group of characters. It's, a book a week. Yeah. it's just a book a week, which is the Star Wars problem right now. Yes, but we're, but it's. Yeah, I love Beast too months. in the um, in his lab. Sometimes he's in the lab coat with his underoos or underwear on, and I love that. That's just like what a ridiculous thing that he's got the doctor coat on, but then he's just wearing under his underwear underneath it. Well, he's got the the fur <laughs> too, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. It's just funny to me. But uh, yeah, Andy Andy Kubert holding his own in the mix here. I remember his stuff was my favorite out of the different issues that I saw. In the early days, but I I didn't see the Jay Lee stuff. I didn't see the Greg Capullo stuff. I don't remember Jay Lee doing that at all. I remember and once I saw like the covers and stuff. Yes, but I hate turning a book sideways. Yeah, oh, but wait. he does a good job with that panel. What page are you on right now, Aaron? Uh, three eighty nine, mm-hmm. three eighty eight, um, three eighty nine. We need to go back to three seventy eight for just a moment for one of our viewers because that's the gruel scene. Oh, you missed it. We, yeah, we missed it, and then we can go back. Oh uh, yeah, there's a good boy. Yep. Yeah, uh, Strife's got some some mommy daddy issues. That's for sure. Yeah, he's a uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's interesting. One there, of the, there's something there. <clears throat> it, it's interesting how quickly he's he's developed as a formidable villain, and how quickly his behavior towards Scott and Jean kind of kind of make you a second guess how uh, how deadly he really is, and how. Uh, how traumatized he actually yes. is. <laughs> that th- th- you do get this weird sympathy element for yeah. him a bit, but uh, oh, I, this, th- I like this bit where uh, Wolverine has his lit cigarette uh, aboard uh, yes. his cable s- spaceship, and they exting- the the computer automatically extinguishes the uh, yep. uh, the cigarette. That's a I good, love that's actually, a good bit. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna have a, I love that, that these characters are smoking cigarettes. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love that Gambit and Wolverine are there. Um, just burning cancer sticks in the background and it makes them look cool. Mm-hmm. Smoking a cigarette makes you look cool. <laughs> you heard it from notable smut peddler, Evan noted, Coy. Noted smut peddler, Evan Coy. Book burner. Smoking a cigarette makes you look cool. Thank you. You hear that, kids? 112 East Bridge Street, the, the comic, comic shop. shop. Soon to be the comic slash vape yeah. shop. Yeah. No, we can't. We're can't, not we're grandfathered at, we're in. <laughs> we're, in his, <laughs> we we're in a historic zone, so you can't do that. We oh, learned really? that about the tattoo shop that was opening up next door. Downtown, oh. not. Can't do West it. West side, not historic. You can open up whatever business you want. Oh. Coincidentally. Interesting. Okay. I, I do love how these characters are drawn. Like w- Once you get Bishop, Wolverine, and Cable together, <sighs> it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a very dynamic. It's a lot movie. of testosterone there. I loved Bishop. He, that top five X Men for yeah, me. When he had so a solo fun. book, I bought it when it came out. The last Bishop which, book, which solo book? The I didn't mini care series for. or the one where he's got the dreads and he's. Uh, I think off I think in the I future. gave the monthly series a shot too. I bought the with the one with the shard. You yeah, know, I bought that, and then when he had his own thing with George's Genty, yeah, I, I bought that really too. Good. I love that series actually. I, I I don't remember much about it so so long ago, but I bought it for a while. I d- it didn't stop with the uh, issue one. But uh, yeah, I, I like Bishop as a character a lot. See, uh, the only X Men whose first appearance I have is Bishop's. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that's the only one. What book is I that? I don't have it. Oh my gosh, it's I can't un- remember. It's uncanny, right? It's yeah. uncanny something. It's a Wills uh, Protasio. I, I can see that. Yes, it is. Yeah. Because I don't think anyone draws Bishop better than Wills. And he had a buddy there that looked exactly like Wills Protasio. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's his friend who got killed, right? Who I he feels guilty so. about. Yeah. I believe so. Because, uh, well, I remember those Bishop series was him, like, having nightmares and stuff about, uh, or maybe it was a backup, but, you know, he had guilt over uh, letting his, his buddy go down. Greg Capullo, man. Look at this little running sequence with... Yeah. Uh, Do you remember this, Aaron? It's a black and white book, I think. I, rem- I remember the cover, but I don't think I had it. Yeah, I I was trying to figure... I, I've, been tr- I've been spending the entire time that we've been discussing whatever's going on looking for this archangel book just to see who the creative team was greg capullo is so good at storytelling like i remember the story beats from his stuff the, i think the best uh as i've I as know everybody's I've s- oh sorry Aaron. all no, i was go gonna say is uh as i've said before i prefer greg capullo's uh spawn work sometimes to todd's um well, i think like even todd would probably say 
yeah, he really helped form the character, especially when it was only a subscriber book. I don't think it would have gotten to 300 if Capullo hadn't helped him along the way. Yeah. Look at look at this uh, Executioner's Song uh, trade paperback cover. This must have been, you know, mid-90s or Tell something. Tell me that's not cartoon, right? Well, uh, that's it's Joe Mad. Joe Mad. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's Joe Mad. Yeah, yeah it's Joe Mad. Joe Mad. Uh, inked by Terry Austin. But th- th- but he was probably on the book at the time, and this is how you sell the old rope, get yeah. the new guy to do the cover for the old thing. But I, I don't think that this is... It w- overall, I think Executioner's Song was much stronger than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was I gonna, thought so, too. I yeah. thought it was going to mm-hmm. be very weak and kind of silly. I thought it was going to have good moments. I thought it was going to have some classic 90s you know, X-Men stuff, but it was a very well-executed 12 issues. It, it was very tight, and even when things... There were a couple moments it didn't feel... It was well executed, sir. It was well executed. Uh, <laughs> it were a couple moments that I go, eh. But really, I thought all the character development stuff was great. The storytelling was great. Strife turns from this psychotic guy to this really weird, the like... Whiny baby. Mess yep. of a human yeah. being. Um, again, I like how Beast is portrayed. I like the dynamic between Wolverine, Bishop, and Cable. Mm-hmm. Um uh, Do you like this, this cool is, baby? This is weird. This cool baby Again, with a man a, head? That was disturbing. Yeah. Beyond what words. What page are you on? I'm on 421. Oh, yeah. We're on 420. Yes. Jonathan, we're on page 420. To the, to the baby. <clears throat> we'll ponder the specifics later. I was, a, I was a little bit worried when I first came across this moment that it was going to be one of those uh, two people tied on the railroad track situations, mm-hmm. and I'm really glad that isn't how this whole thing played out. Like the, mm-hmm. you have to kill the baby to live. Uh, yeah. No, that's not, <laughs> that's been done far too many times. Mm-hmm. Uh, I expect better from the X-Men. <laughs> Some, oh, a strange shading choice here. What's that? With Cyclops with a, looks like he's got a beard. Oh, uh, yeah. It's so dark. That, that's neck beard Cyclops. He's been held prisoner for so long he's grown a neck beard. Yeah, he's played a lot of World of Warcraft in captivity. Fighting the fighting the dark riders, yeah, that's that's fine. Oh, uh, the double nose. This thing always yeah, drove me nuts a little bit. I don't like that. What page are you on? Uh, four thirty. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. With the nose and the nose. I know he's what, trying to do the shiny thing. Turner. The shiny thing is so hard, especially if you don't have good yeah. reference. This, this yeah, this must be Brandon Peterson. I bet shiny is a little bit easier now with uh, more technology. Yeah, everything's easier. But then, uh, but then you lose kind of that kinetic. Like geometric, like energetic style, like uh, that cover is just wild. Yeah, this uh, one. Yeah, Xavier just burping, burping up the, the techno yeah. virus or techno organic virus. So uh, Xavier uh, gets How a new Zeta? doctor in the fe- in Apocalypse yeah. who comes in and like puts the techno organic virus on steroids so that it burns through his system. Um, the whole time, Archangel has come to is like. Definitely coming to terms with his relationship with Martin's in love Apocalypse. with this two-page spread, by the way. I love this. I just love yeah. mm-hmm. the flow, like the. How did this never get released as a poster? Yeah, yeah. I if you got rid of the Wolverine in the background, yeah. like why would you? But why would you get rid of the Wolverine? Well, if you're making well, a, a poster. poster. I mean, are you, are you being serious? You would leave the Wolverine. I would in? leave him in there. I like I like the half tone in there. I, I like, like the well, you half like the half tone, but like yeah. I think it's. In a comic, it works, but as a poster, I feel like it'd be very unbalanced. Yeah. Make Wolverine bigger. <laughs> yeah. But I think this is just your bias work. towards halftone and Wolverine. That's I just like that. Yeah. Your you're, probably, you're probably not wrong. I just like how Storm looks. Look at that ice got, man, like, man. X Factor starts off, and the, the, the darker characters kind of with that shadow, and then mm-hmm. it gets lighter as you go across. Um, yeah, I love that storm. And it's yeah, Jay you, Lee making showing I can I can draw pretty people. Yeah, that 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 Ice Man Bobby looks great. Yeah, yeah. Has Ice Man re- ever looked a, better? That's really a dope looking ice. It's so simple. Yeah, but like he but, just looks very strong, very but, like. But when dangerous. you can simplify a character down to like to just base components and still identify him, that's yeah. that's the core of the character. That's what that's what you want to draw. And yeah, and how do you? I mean, what are the distinguishing characteristics for Ice Man? <laughs> He's just a very angular Silver Surfer. Yeah, but but yeah. but yeah. it just he nails it. I think yeah. that's funny though. The one thing that popped up from everybody as we were as we started reading this was that Jay Lee, holy crap, this is amazing. Yeah, um, his page layouts. Oof. And it's funny if you just flip through the book, it, it's really not as jarring as you think it would be. There you go. I think this might page four forty one might have uh, my favorite illustration of, of strife in the entire four forty one. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, good. The cape. That's well, that w- that was the cover iconic. of the trade yeah. paperback, yeah. Paper, right? Yeah. 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 
The good trade, yeah. The good trade. Uh, yeah. Page 440. Like, those look like storyboards to me. I, 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 can, oh, yeah. I can feel this animated, right? A whole, a whole page telling a story with no words. How, how beautiful is that? This, this is like punches way above the weight of what I thought this would yeah. be, this, this, this page here. And it's mostly monochromatic, too. I think that's what makes the pops of color, like those flat colors, really stand out. It's weird. I want to hate the cape on Strife on 441 because the fabric is just done very weird, but his style is just oh, yeah. so strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't matter. It, yeah. just, it's, it doesn't matter if the folds of the fabric aren't correct. It's just so bold. Oh, I, I love the turn of the neck here with the, the visor and the, the angularity of the visor. Like There's such movement and motion. Like from here to here, and, it's and this is El Mil Milgram still inking him. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. <clears throat> yeah. Who knew El had that gear in him? I I did not. I thought he was like House Marvel style. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. When you say Ron Lim, it's like yeah, that's why I see him inking. Not that's anything wrong yeah. with Ron Lim. Ron Lim's great. Yep. Yeah. Holding you to that, Aaron. What's that? <laughs> Holding you to that. What uh, Ron Lim's uh, great. Yeah, he's, Ron he's fine. He's fine. He's Look, consistent. He did a, yeah. He's consistent. He did a ton he's of stuff. Fast. He's yeah. fast. The fast as f. Mm -hmm. Now this 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 series uh, executioner song I think we would all recommend anybody pick it up. Oh, I'm gonna make um, one of my friends read it. It's yeah. it's far better than it should be with yeah. these creators coming in trying to pick up all these pieces. I think in um, Fabian's uh, Fabian who <laughs> Nisiesa uh, in his uh, forward for the original trade he was discussing the fact that basically. Um, a bunch of musicians dropped their instruments in a room and walked off to play someplace else, and they had to come pick up these instruments they didn't know and uh, perform. And Can you go back? The story flow is great. The I think they're excellent use of characters and places. Is it, like, Watchmen-level groundbreaking stuff? No, but it's far better than most Again, miniseries that we can uh, doesn't, talk about. But it just works. Mm -hmm. From uh, present day, there is only one other uh, comic that I've I've been reading for almost twelve issues at this point that's mm -hmm. coming out from or that's been coming out consistently, and it's it's night and day the quality that the twelve issues of storytelling had at this time period when everybody was really focused on everything versus um, what what Wildcats has mm -hmm. turned into uh, for DC in the in the last year. You still read that? I am still reading Wildcats. God Cats. bless, God I, bless you. Yep, I, I'm on issue. It's gonna get good at some point. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's not. Nope. It, it has not gotten good. But I'm I'm like 11 issues in, so it, he's it, committed. Yeah. But yeah, these guys they committed. set up they set up so much stuff, uh, storylines and potential st uh, stuff uh, for the next two or three years of their runs. Just talking about art and talking about distilling things down. If you look at page 456. And then take a look at uh, the panel that has Wolverine and Bishop standing next to each other. Such a great simplified, like such great posing there. So so simple. Oh, yeah. The characters are really reduced to like their their core essence there, and they they look like the characters. Like that's that's just really well done when you can make characters small like that, mm -hmm. and still sell so much about them. Right. Oh yeah, I had this one, man. This was another one of my prized possessions. Because if you, when you're like, I don't know how old was I? I don't I don't even think I was ten yet. When you get a hold of this issue, open it up, and you got Cable with a gun, you got mm -hmm. Bishop with a gun, and Wolverine with his claws out, and they're all they're all ready to go. Ready to go. That's what was fun. There were there was a fun group. Like oh yeah, look at look mm -hmm. at that. Now we're in business. And it's where Cable wants to strategize, and Wolverine's like, nope, we're just gonna start. Killing people. I'm pretty sure that when I was reading a couple of uh, different reviews and things of this, that they gave a lot of credit to Peter David for making those three characters interesting together, and not just three Alpha Bros. Yeah, doing Alpha Bros. Because it is, it's three Alpha Bros. Yep. But yeah, each one of them ha does have a distinct personality, and the way that they work off each other like is the, interesting. The bit where Cable's like, uh, "This is gonna. <laughs> if I do this by myself, it's gonna take me 25 minutes." And then Wolverine's like, "What if we help?" Because it's me 40, 45 yeah. minutes or whatever. <laughs> it is, yeah. uh, like, don't help me. And the, the whole uh, Wolverine, oh, I know where they are. They're on the moon. And then Peter David's response to this, because it's out of the blue, is just to write the line, oh, of course it's on the moon. Why, why wouldn't it be? <laughs> so yeah, Peter David kind of was credited as the one who, who was the architect for this? Or the, uh, this was, uh, Fabian was the architect. Yeah. Okay. He, uh, when they, they did these, the creators got together. They had this huge summit. They talked through. Do you think they still do creator summits anymore? Yes. Do they? I, I don't think to the extent that they used no. to. Um, I used to read about those in Wizard. I, used to I think it's like cool. a Zoom call now. Um, 20 minutes. So I guess uh, Fabian came through. He did this whole breakdown mm -hmm. of the story, and then they ripped his story apart. The again. And then they reassembled it, and 
Peter David, who notoriously hates crossovers, um, helped him out a lot with that. If you look in his X Factor books, he's the only one that really continues storylines from his ongoing book in there. And it's like maybe a page or two per uh, comic. But yeah, uh, like I said, there's there's a, the Return of Magneto was supposed to happen here, and thankfully they were wise enough not to do that. Yeah, and there's enough to bring him back for because Magneto's big enough for his own thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that save that for Fatal Attractions, and and they did. Mm-hmm. And they, I think that was very successful for them too. Yep. I think that's next that, in my reading order. That's epi- a epic collection uh, coming out in uh, April. And I don't like turning sideways. How'd they do it this one? Uh, big, uh, I had a little yeah. bit more trouble yeah. with this one. This is it's Capullo. Yeah, it's very again. busy. Capullo yeah. is the only one that makes you turn. I think he is. Well, because he's he's that plugged into John those image Byrne guys, Fantastic right? Four issue that's entirely sideways. John Byrne does. Yeah, he did one. Yeah. Interesting. I learned well, something you, new you, about John Byrne victim? every day. Hmm? I, just, I just don't want to read a book sideways the entire time. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. kind there's kind of a uh, an ergonomics to the reading of a book that you don't want to disturb for the for the comfort of the reader. I get that. Man, it's so nice to see the characters in these like iconic costumes doing stuff together, because they've gone through so many permutations that are. Uh, Do they not call the Blackbird the Blackbird anymore? Is it the X Jet? I, I have no idea. X Jet? Did somebody say that in this? No. No. But, no, but what the, the storm figure that we the, just got in here, we can show it. Maybe Look at this at the comic shop, forty-five dollars. Hold up a little bit, Martin. Just a little bit. Oh, X Men Team Jet and Storm, beautiful looking toy from X Men '97. Uh, the new Mohawk cartoon that's coming out. The Mohawk coming Storm. Out. Um, but when looking this up, I was like, I've never, don't ever remember it being the X Jet. They then call I look, it the X Jet sometimes. I, I then I looked up the Wikipedia on it. Yes, the the terminology. I don't know if it's moved from Blackbird to X Jet or what. Hmm. Did Grant Morrison was their jet an X like a, a, a jet that had an X on it or like it was partially built into an X? It probably because Grant Morrison. Grant Morrison. But uh, yeah, I I don't oh, know. Um, as we were reading this, uh, slug, uh, we were reading the the preamble stuff that came first, and then as soon as we turned in, as soon as I got to Executioner Song proper, and I think it was is it Andy or Adam? Andy, Andy, Andy uh, Kubert, uh, his work, uh, his artwork, and it's like instantly it felt like X Men to me. That yeah. was the that was the turning point. And I think Aaron had a similar thing, where it's just like, okay, yes, this is this is what we this is the X Men. This is this answer a question from earlier. I think that Scott actually had yes, answered. Yes, I it saw in there. Scott answered it for us. But um, Marvel Age, I think, was the name of the book you guys were looking, yeah. looking at earlier. Well, if that was the interview one. one. Oh, I cannot remember Marvel. Marvel Age. Marvel bananas. Oh Marvel Age was their, it's a was total their blind spot. Zine. <clears throat> it wasn't. It wasn't a fan zine. It was. Uh, I have to read this. Uh, I bought a bunch of back issues that I cannot remember. But anyway. Oh, they do have the, the files on the back. Yeah, like the early early issues here with like Forge and Storm and like their weird relationship. They're very pretty issues, but not a lot happens in them. Yeah, and it feels very forced, like. Like I understand that X Men is partially a soap opera, but it just felt s- it just hit so hard over it's the like head. Some soap opera, <laughs> like it just hit so hard, and it's just Scott. like real. It's just too much. And then the Jim Lee issues with the Mojo Verse, it was fun, but just like I'm, I don't like Jim Lee on X Men. Yeah, I mean, Ad- I, I, I don't. I every time I have to read those issues or look at them, I nice art, but you're not a. S- writer in this it's no it was very very strange yeah yeah it, i don't find it enjoyable at he, all. he like he's got a cool style and he draws the x-men well but he like neutered the story it's not like mm-hmm. a cool story it's yeah. like a humor story it's almost like a what the yeah and not even a good x babies issue right <laughs> yeah it's, it's no art adams x babies no for sure <laughs> or, oh, chris claremont or adams but uh and then you get tom rainey and he's doing the best he can. You can you get the sense that uh, there's a lot of pressure on mm-hmm. everybody who comes in, so they're trying to do their thing, mm-hmm. and they're also they're also cooking and working super fast. They get Art T Bear, and is it T Bear or Thibbert? I don't know. Uh, Thibbert. We did a deep dive on him the other day, Evan, and we never agreed. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> he's he was one of those weird guys who kind of filled in all over the place, but never really yeah. got a lot of recognition for it. Yeah. And then Jay Lee hits. Yes. Yeah. Is, he, is he the first one? No, no. Adam Andy is. Uh, the first rate. No, I guess Brandon Peterson comes in. Brandon, I, he's a serviceable guy. He's been around a long time, working super hard. It was really odd, like we had mentioned earlier, that the epilogue is not included in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, give us, 
Michael, give us a, a, a thirty second epilogue here, because um, this should have been included in this. Trade. Yeah. So there are three different uh, three different stories that go on in the the epilogue. So Professor X um, has the ability to walk again for a very brief period of time because of the success with Apocalypse's surgery. Um, so he spends some time with Jubilee learning, uh, not, not really learning how to walk, but he learns how to, learns how to roller skate. And he basically just gets to spend some time being a normal man for a little bit. Uh, Jubilee and Charles relationship improves because of this. Um, even though his, his, uh, his walking ability eventually le uh, leaves him again. Uh, we have with a great moment, I think with uh, Jubilee's uh, yeah, monologue. Yeah. Jubilee's realizing that she doesn't have to say things to, she doesn't have to say things. She doesn't have to announce what she's doing. She can just she's just part of the team. She can be there and she can help. She doesn't have she's not the kid anymore. She's part of the team. So as you see like professors falling over, it's yep. like, do I do something? And it's like, yeah, man. Yep. Um you have Rogue and Gambit's budding relationship, uh, with Gambit, not quite sure what to say to Rogue. Rogue um pretty much telling him to wisen up about some things and Gambit leaves. He comes back with uh, with something he can put over Rogue, so he can actually like put his arm around her and you know show that he does care. He's not just the. I don't, I don't know what Gambit's deal was at this time period. Well, he was kind of flirty with Storm. Yeah, and like, everybody. Yeah, was just yeah. I don't know. Whatever. And then uh, last, which Evan talked about earlier, was uh, Beast and Warren rebuilding the bar that got blown up. Um, just reminiscing about old times as original members of the X team together. Um, doing some good for the community and uh it was a very nice wholesome wholesome way to end this giant very brotherly like yeah. they're kind of like wrestling almost yep. and like you know mm -hmm. picking on one another and making fun of one another so it was it, it was yeah, very fun, fun. a, a great way to end Bill. the 12 <clears throat> yeah. issues i think this is when he hits his stride for these small moments because he continues to do these types of things and this is not so overwrought and yep. like Crying and scream. It's just it's just it's characters good. being around each yeah, other. Yeah, one of the reviews says this is the only this is the this is the chapter that he wrote that was actually the the best was yeah it, yeah small moments here and you say that term a lot and that's what, what was great about that book. It's like mm -hmm. you didn't need villains, you didn't need big drama. It's mm -hmm. just like what are the inner? It was soap opera, but it was mm -hmm. good. All three little yeah. acts were meaningful, and you really like understood the characters mm -hmm. better. I miss baseball yeah. games. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that was was the last one who did that? Was it when Alan Davis took over the writing? Was that the last one? It might be. Uh, although I think they did something with like the X Men Gold when they were oh, did when they? they were living in Central Park. Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. Baseball games? No, yeah. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, when they softball, baseball, yeah. basketball, yeah. Yeah. sometime. Uh, so at the end of this, we uh, which when I was reading this, I thought this is like the big huge introduction <coughs> to the Legacy Virus, but it's basically just uh, the last panel or two of uh, Sinister's. Assistant opening up a canister, thinking it had uh, the DNA for uh, Gene and Scott in it. Well, that sounds wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it had nothing in it. And that's where they left you with that. And that was actually uh, Strife's last uh, hit was the Legacy Virus, which is an allegory for the uh, for HIV and AIDS yes. uh, uh, at the time, which will strike mutants. They'll be even more fear. They, they'll find a way to uh, reinstate that humans fear mutants. And this becomes mm -hmm. the the... The thrust for the next several years, um, the big thrust, big thrust, Scott's DNA, <coughs> Gene's DNA, yeah, appropriate, very appropriate. But yeah, yeah, overall, two thumbs up. Yeah, very good read. Did we? Yeah, I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. I thought yep, it would be same. like a nostalgia, like haha -ha yep. read. But exactly. then once you get into it, it's the it, the characterization, like the Peter David, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really sells it, and the other people pick up what he does yep. and, and run with it. And I think uh, Fabian's good at uh, our Fabian. Fabian who? Hmm? Maybe a, yeah. I, I kind of wish they would do stuff like that, that because there's it's a big story, but it's not it's not overwhelming. Yeah, no. Yeah. I'm like even Evans, like, oh, I'm a, I'm on a chapter, I'm on episode six. I, I keep uh, saying episode for how, some reason. I don't. <laughs> how yeah. many? How many more? Uh, it, it's like sixteen, right? And we're like, no, it's just twelve. It's I kept thinking it was fourteen. Three three reason. issues across four titles, um, and it does read all the way through. Like, yeah. uh, if you have mm -hmm. a familiarity with the X Men characters, it's it's easy to to pick up. And go through, which man, there really is not something like that nowadays. No, no. everything is so complicated for no reason. I'm sure uh, that we might that might change soon once they uh well, they, they cycle out of the Hickman uh era. Well, well they've also true. got the Ultimate X Men by Peach Momoko coming out too. Did you hear about that? Oh, from, is she from doing New York that? Comic Con? Yeah, she's doing she's writing and drawing Ultimate X Men. Ooh, 
That should be fun. Hope it sells better than her other uh, Xbox. Oh, De- did, Demon yeah. Days. Yeah, um, Demon Days, Days was cool, but didn't sell. Yeah. No. Nope. Oh yeah. I didn't read it, but when I was. It's, she, it's really neat. She's it like a highly sought after artist. Oh, I know. She, she's she's great. amazing. Her art's yeah, great. I mean, I'm not saying anything about her art. I just don't yeah. know her. Well, Evan, well. you think she's a, an art factory? It's not. Dude, we had this conversation mm-hmm. at the beginning of the pandemic, yeah. or whatever. That we're like, is Peach Momoko a studio? Because she had a cover for everything. We're like, how is? How yeah. are they producing so much all work? All this stuff work. all over the and place. And she's just a workhorse. At, uh, at, yeah. at New York City Comic Con mm-hmm. this year, she did not do photos with people, specifically so she could spend more time remarking and signing things. She said she got about seven hours more productivity by not taking photos with people. So that's just her thing. She yeah. she works, and she works, and she works. Uh, she was painting there, too. You could have gotten, wow. like, for $500, you could have gotten, like, a nice painted peach mimoco piece. She got four of them done, I think, and they all sold while she was there. That's Dang. Sick. I yeah. would I would love to go to Artist Alley at New York mm-hmm. Comic Con. I don't know if I have much Rob interest in, any, in anything else, but uh, it? yeah, yeah, it's I'd, a I'd like it's amazing, Rob. Aaron. You would, yeah, it's just the stuff you find. I would meet Rob. Yeah, <laughs> I meant just the regular artist. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. But yeah, you always find such cool stuff, and I just need to go again. It's been too long. Yeah, I've never even gone. I've gone to more indie 2024 stuff. Twenty twenty four or twenty twenty five. That that's one I would consider because it's not a million miles away. Yeah, it's a train ride. Yeah. I always used to laugh. I, 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 you know, once a year I'd be going into the city or taking the train for something for work, and you're on the train and half people are suited and tied up, and then half the people are cosplaying. Yeah. It's like, oh, I guess it's Comic Con this. That weekend. was our ferry ride from New Jersey over to um, to um, Manhattan. Was it was a bunch of people in business suits making a little, little on their little pa- PDAs at the time because it was so long ago, and Pokemon yep. and Riddlers. It's just and no one. No one was phased by it. Well, it's like uh, my wife and I went down to New York City at the end of June, beginning of July, and we're on the we're on the subway, and I see uh, you know, uh, gold glitter speedos and uh, pink boas everywhere. It's like, oh, it must be prides going yeah. on. Yeah, and that was just in the mirror he was looking in. Yeah, I was I was wearing it. I was I was in my Elton John cosplay because I was going to New York Comic Con. All right, we did it. We did. Any any final words, gentlemen? Uh, songs end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well executed. Well executed. Stress a baby clone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Cry that baby, baby clone. that baby Cry clone baby is clone. the best. That that weirdo baby clone with the adult head. Yeah, yeah. That's probably my favorite thing in the whole book. Now that you mention it, Jonathan. Oh, and Strife feeding feeding Cyclops the the gruel. The <laughs> yes, first, yes. With his fingers and treating his mom to tentacles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah I think they. You know, he's a villain that like it took a twist. But it wasn't a lame twist. Yeah. There, there was some substance to the strangeness of Strife. Jonathan says, road trip to New York City Comic Con. Maybe. Road trip? Uh, train trip probably be easier. That's what Weldon did, right? Took, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Whatever. All right. Aaron, you want to take us home? You've been listening to A Comic Shop Does a Podcast with me, the jubilation of Zeely Aaron Zeely. No, oh, and I'm Evan Coy. I'm infected with the techno-organic <laughs> virus. And I'm bald. <laughs> <laughs> you are Professor Xavier. <laughs> yes. Um we're here with our very special guest. Martin Kinney, who is excited to be here. And regular guest. Michael Kelly Ban. Oh, we didn't even make any jokes related to that, but that's okay. All right. Apologies, Apologies to, to Jack, Jack Kirby. Kirby. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs>